Hello and welcome. I am Lisa, the queen of support here at Post Point of Sale. And today I'm going to give you a quick demo on how to get all of your inventory added to your Post Cash Register. So the first thing you're going to want to do is log in to the Post Management System and click the Inventory tab at the top of the screen. Once there, you have several options and I'm going to go through them in order here. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is add a new category. Now adding a new category is a great way to keep your post inventory organized. So we're going to add a category here called candy bars. And I'm going to have this category be available in store, meaning it will appear in the cash register. I'm also going to add a main image. So I'm going to go ahead and click browse. And on my desktop, I put this nice photo of some candy bars. Go ahead and select that so it's centered, looks good here. I'm going to click Done. All right, so now that is the image that appears on your register. Now, because it is a high res image, the online feature automatically illuminated, but you can actually deactivate that if you'd like. Now, I do want the main, um, the candy bar category to be listed as a main category. So I do have the option here to do that. So here it's listed here automatically selected as a main category. But if I wanted to add it as a subcategory, I could click something like this candy and it would appear as a subcategory under the candy category, which I already have. But in this case, I do want candy bars to be its own category. So I'm going to select main category so that it's its own main category, meaning it's the first category. So we're going to go ahead and click save. Now you'll see on the left hand side of the screen, candy bars has been added. But if you click candy bars, there's nothing inside. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add the first item. Now there's two ways to add inventory. You can add a new item manually or you can click import. So I'm going to show you how to add a new item manually first. So you go ahead and add a new item. Go ahead and add the name. We're going to say for this one, we're going to say Twix. And we're going to add the SKU. And the supplier name is going to be Bob's Candy. Quantity in stock will be 89. Now for this particular item, I don't want to add an image. I'm going to actually use a color code. So I'm going to click color code here and choose the color. And Twix, I'm going to say this color is good. And you can see right here, you do have the option to add this particular item to several different categories. But in this case, I only want the Twix to be added to candy bars. So I'm going to make sure that candy bars and only candy bars is selected. If I wanted to add it to chocolate candy, I could do that as well. I could also add it to the candy category too. But in this case, I'm going to stick with candy bars. We're going to do a supplier price of 29 cents and a markup. I'm going to actually ignore that, but you can actually do a markup. We'll say 150% and that will automatically give you the price. But in this case, I'm going to manually add the price, which will change the markup. So we're going to say that's $1.50, which makes the markup now 417%. But maybe this is being sold in an airport. Who knows? The next thing you're going to want to do is take a look at the other options you have. Open-ended item is a great feature if you have an item that changes price regularly. For Twix, you're probably not going to have that option. But if you do work, for example, in a grocery store, bananas, tomatoes, carrots, vegetables, they're going to be changing price daily. So what you can do is you can enable that open-ended item feature. That means that during checkout, the standard price of 150 will appear, but you do have the option to change the price to whatever the price is for that day. This is a great feature so you don't have to go in and out of your management system every day and change the price. You can actually do it during the checkout process. So in this case, the Twix is going to be $1.50 regularly, so I don't need to enable that open-ended item feature. Now over here in your in-store preferences, you have two options here. You have items out of stock and show in register. So of course I want to show the Twix in the register, so I've enabled yes. Now items out of stock means 
Two things, available for pre-order means that the item can go into the negative. This is great for food industry if you want to, for example, have a cheeseburger and you want it to go into the negative to show how many you've sold because honestly you don't have 50 cheeseburgers in stock. You'll sell them a different, um, a, in a different way than what you would have normally for, for quantities in stock. So available for pre-order is a great feature there. Do not display is good for retail shops so that what this feature does is it does not display the item in the register if the quantity is zero or less than zero. So for example, I'm going to actually select do not display for this because I don't want Twix to show up in the register if I don't have any in stock. Down at the bottom, you have the option to add different features for your online catalog. You can show this online in this, in this particular case, I can't show the Twix online because I do not have a high resolution image for it. But you do have the option, if you were to upload a high resolution image, to enable that feature to show the item in your online catalog. You can show it in the featured section if you're featuring that candy bar for the day. And you can show it in the new section as well if it is a new product. You can also add additional images based on angle, um, size, different colors you can do that as well. And you have the option here to add an item description. This is of course for the online catalog. But we don't actually have um, the Twix added to the online catalog so we're going to leave that field blank. So we're going to go ahead and click Save. And now we're still in the candy bars category and you'll see now that we have the Twix right there. Now if I wanted to edit that I can click edit mode and very quickly do a quick edit. So I want to change the quantity. Maybe I messed up and there's actually 97 of those. So I can go ahead and click quantity and change the quantity there. Or I can delete the item as well by clicking the box here and clicking delete. But I actually don't want to delete it so we're going to not do that. I'm going to turn off edit mode. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click import. Now if you're doing a big a big import of items, say for example, you have not just one item, but you have a thousand items that you want to do. The import feature is a great way to use to do that, to get those items in your pose inventory quickly and easily. So to save some time, I've actually already had a file ready to go. So this is what it looks like. So the first thing you're going to want to do on your pose inventory is download the CSV template. This will give you all the field values. It's really important that you use the field values that we give you rather than making up your own because the, the system has to match the field values into, into the pose um, coding that we've done. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you use the, the CSV template that we provide. So back to the template here, you'll have at the top, the different field names, item name, item SKU, supplier name, supplier cost, tax rate, etc. You're going to want to fill out these items. Um, the categories do not have to be listed, but everything else is mandatory. So you're going to want to make sure that you do have, I'm going to spread this out so you can see, that you do have all of these entered. Okay, so zero means no, one means yes. That's just coding language. So you're going to want to um, click zero if you don't want it to appear appear in store or online. Um, for this particular one, I do want it to appear, appear in store, so I'm going to click one for yes. Now what you're going to want to do after that is you're going to want to file and you're going to want to save as. You're going to want to make sure it's saved as a CSV of file. That is a comma separated value, or I'm sorry, a comma delimited file, CSV. So you're going to want to select from the drop down, comma delimited. Okay, so you're going to want to make sure that it's comma delimited. Click Save. I already have it saved, so I'm just going to click Replace. And now I'm going to go back to Pose. I'm going to choose that file. Here it is. Now this is really important that you pay attention here. For example, you have two options. You have Add or Update, and you have Delete. Now be careful not to delete your entire inventory unless you want to deliberately do that. For this particular case, I obviously don't want to delete all my inventory. I want to just add and update the existing inventory that I have with this new item. So I've chosen the file. I've clicked Add and Update. And I'm going to go ahead and click Import. Just takes a minute. 
All right, so now we're going to go ahead and click candy bars. And the Mars bar that we just added is here. So if we want to add a photo to that, we're going to go ahead and click Mars bar. We're going to click main image. We're going to click browse. And here I have the Mars bar all ready to go. All right, so we're just going to center that so it looks good. We're going to click done. And always, always, always make sure you click save. So now we have the Mars bar under candy bars and we have the Twix bar under candy bars. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go back. So here is a list of all of my current inventory and I wanna get that into an export. So I'm gonna click export to export that into a CSV file. The system will tell me how many products I am exporting. Now if I didn't want to export all of my items but I wanted to, for example, just export the candy, I can click candy and then click export and it'll see that it will only export that particular category. So that is a great way to get just the items that you need. But in this case, I actually want to export everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and click back so that I'm on the main page here. I'm gonna go ahead and click export. I'm gonna click continue. All right, so that's, go, that's downloaded. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that. Now what you're gonna see here might look a little confusing, but this is a file that ex that Excel automatically downloads and they put it into this particular format. So it looks like a mess right now, but I'm gonna show you exactly how to fix it so that it doesn't look like a mess. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is select A, okay? So that selects the entire A column. Once there, you're gonna wanna click Data at the top. You're gonna wanna click Text to Columns here Okay, you're gonna wanna make sure that you've selected delimited, that is the default anyway. You're gonna wanna click next. Now you're gonna wanna remove the tab check and you're gonna wanna replace it with comma. And you can see here that it's separated that now by comma. So you can go ahead and click finish when you're done. And voila, your products are separated. So this is your nice clean Excel file ready to go you can take a look at all of your products and you can make any changes that you want. So for example, this is a great way to edit all of your products at once. So maybe you have several products that need price changes. You can go through, you can do an export, you can change the prices and then you can save and then you can re-upload and do an add and replace. So I'm gonna go ahead and close these. All right, so that is pretty much a breakdown on how to get inventory added to your POSE register. If you have any further questions, we can be reached via email at support at and feel free to email us anytime. Thanks so much.